A reading from Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. And so Jonah arose, and he went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. And Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloths, from the greatest of them to the least of them. And the word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered in sackcloth. And let them call out mightily to God. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hand. Who knows? God may turn and relent and Turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. And when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. Mention Jonah, and the first thing that comes into most people's minds is the great fish that has swallowed him. But in the reading that we just heard, it follows right after that. When the word of the Lord comes, the fish has already passed. Jonah is covered in the slime of the fish and listening to the word of the Lord a second time as he tells him to go and preach to that great city of Nineveh. Jonah preaches, the people listen and repent and they are saved. Jonah is not surprised. I think we would be. For I think that we have to some degree admit that we have lost confidence in the word of God. For today we look around at a world that is filled with evil, just as evil as in the day of Jonah. Nineveh was a terrible place. And we think, In our own day and age, why bother? They're not going to listen. They're not going to change their ways. They're not going to repent. If we speak, they'll just call us haters and bigots and intolerant people. And then, then we'll be persecuted, or even worse, The word of the Lord is silenced by our own doubts and our own fears. But Jonah didn't doubt the power of the word of God. He didn't doubt that Nineveh could or would repent. He just didn't want them to repent. He didn't want them to be saved. They were evil. They were way too far gone. Crucify them, is the words that Jonah wanted to say. Or at very least, flog them and stone them and whip them. Send them fire and brimstone. But forgiveness? 
No way. That's why Jonah ran, and the same word that had ordered that great fish to swallow Jonah, then spit him up out of that whale in three days, and worked in the hearts of the king of the people of Nineveh, and brought them to repentance. No, Jonah knew that they would do that. And Jonah was furious. Furious at the mercy and the love of God. So too were the Jewish leaders in the days of Jesus. For there were great sinners amongst them in their days as well. There was prostitutes and tax collectors, adulterers, and Jesus was befriending these likes of people. He was teaching them and eating with them, and even worse of all, he was forgiving them. But it's not that easy. You see, Jesus not only forgave and cleansed them, but he followed the law perfectly. Obedient even to the very point of death, death on the cross, so that they might be forgiven, so that you might be forgiven, that I might have forgiveness. But as it was in the day of Jesus, they heard the word of the Lord from the mouth of Jesus. And that word worked within their hearts and brought many to repentance. And wherever there is repentance and faith, faith in God's promised Savior, there is forgiveness of sin. But the Jewish leaders were right in a sense. It wasn't easy. This forgiveness, it did have to be earned, but not by them, not by us, but by Jesus in our place. And so earn it, he did. He was born without sin. He lived without sin, and he died with our sin. He was flogged with the flogging that we deserved, and he wore the crown that was made out of thorns that were caused because our first parents plunged the world into sin. The devil thought that he could overthrow Jesus in the wilderness after 40 days, but just as with the Ninevites, he could not. And after Jesus spent three days in the belly, not of a fish, but of the earth, wearing not sackcloth, but grave clothes. And then he was spit out and rose from the dead that we might have forgiveness, that we might be redeemed, that we might know that life eternal is now ours. It was not easy. But the Lord, word of the Lord was fulfilled. The word was made flesh and did what it promised. And that saved the people of Nineveh, the people of Israel, and all the people that came before them and after them, including you and me. This is the word of the Lord, to repent, and we repent. This is the word of the Lord, you are forgiven, and you are forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Rise and we shall rise. 
For this is the word of the Lord. Jesus. The fulfillment of the word the content of the word, the word made flesh and we believe. Yes, Jesus is the son of God who came to save us. Jonah didn't like that word. The Jewish leaders didn't like that word. And maybe at times we don't like it either. But we need that word, for without it we are lost. Not just them there, those really, really bad people, the Ninevites and those we might consider great sinners today. But you and me, just as Jonah, are in need of forgiveness. So thank goodness for the word of the Lord that works in our hearts, leading us to repentance and faith. It's the all-powerful word that does it. Nothing in us. Nothing in Nineveh. Nothing about humanity. The book of Jonah ends with Jonah brooding over God's mercy and forgiveness. We're not told that there was a happily ever after to end this account, but I like to think that there was. That Jonah himself repented and learned to rejoice in God's forgiveness for him and for the people of Nineveh. But whenever the scripture leaves stories open-ended like that, It is so that we will look at ourselves and put ourselves into the story and see how it is with us. Are we brooding or rejoicing? Are we repenting or accusing? Are we listening to the word of the Lord or doubting it and its power? And just as Jonah in his account had more, there is more for you. For just as Jonah spent three days in the belly of the great fish, and Jesus spent three days in the belly of the earth, baptized into Jesus, you have been baptized into his death and resurrection. Jonah was swallowed and spit forth and set free. Set free to live, to rejoice in the mercy and the love of God. So too. We have been spit forth from the waters of holy baptism unto a new life. Not to brood and accuse. Not to go in gloom and doom and hopelessness. But to rejoice. Rejoice that forgiveness has came even unto us. So that we might hear and rejoice that just as God delivered the Ninevites, he too has delivered us. And so we pray, O God, as the prophet Jonah spent three days in the belly of the great fish, so your son spent three days in the heart of the earth. Grant us repentance to embrace our our death in him through holy baptism and to proclaim his victory over sin and death to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.